product rule. Right? It tells you how to differentiate a product of two functions. Let's take a look at it. Uh, what does the product rule tell you to do? The product rule tells you that if you've got a function h, which is the product of f and g, well, the product rule tells you how to differentiate h. Right? The derivative of h is the derivative of f times g. This is not the derivative, it's just g, plus f times the derivative of g. Right? This is what the product rule tells you. It tells you how to differentiate a product of functions. It's the derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. But why? Right? You want to have a bunch of different reasons to understand why this is the, uh, the way that you differentiate a product. So here's a sort of a geometric way to think about the, the product rule. I'm going to erase this and, and draw a picture. So it looks like this. I'll draw a big draw a big, uh, big rectangle here. And the, uh, the width of this rectangle will be uh, f of x. And the height of this rectangle will be uh, g of x. And the area of this rectangle is its width times its height, which is uh, f of x times g of x. And now I want to know, how does this product change when x changes? That's what the derivative measures. Well, when I uh, wiggle x, f of x changes by, by some amount. Right? So this is just kind of a picture to get you a sense of what's going on. right? So let's imagine that I wiggle x by some small amount, delta x. Then the uh, amount that f of x changes is the derivative of f at x times how much the input changed by. Right? This is some measure of how much the output changes. It's how much the input changes by times the derivative. Right? The derivative is the factor that relates input change to output change. Now, let's say g here is, is also changing, because x is changing, and that might change g. Well, g will change by some factor. And by how much will g change? Well, it'll be the derivative of g at x times, times delta x. And then I've got this, this little bit of extra up here, let's say. Right? So to figure out how much f of x times g of x changes when I change x, well, this small rectangle here that represents how much, that is, the area of that is f of x times g of x. This side stuff here, this is how much f of x times g of x changes when uh, I wiggle x by delta x. And in fact, I know the area of these pieces, right? What's the area of this piece? Well, it's its width, which is f prime of x times delta x times its height, which is g of x. So the area of this piece is, uh, say, f prime of x g of x times delta x. Right, its width is f prime of x delta x, and its height is g of x. What about the area of this top piece here? Well, its height is g prime of x delta x, and its width is f of x. Right, so this piece's area is f of x times g prime of x delta x. And, and this piece here is sort of real small. Right? I mean, if delta x is really small, this piece is, is quite small. So what is this picture supposed to tell you? Well, I'm supposed to try to figure out how f of x times g of x changes when I change x. Right? So I'm, here, delta x is reflecting how much x changes. And how much does f of x times g of x change by? Well, it's mostly just this piece plus this piece. Well, what is that? f of x plus g of x changes by f prime of x g of x times delta x plus f of x times g prime of x times delta x. Right? So the change in, in f of x, g of x in this big rectangle is exactly what the product rule would, would tell you. right? How much f of times g changes? Well, it's like the derivative of f times g plus f times the derivative of g. So I think this, this picture is quite compelling to try to give some, some sort of motivation as to why the product rule is, uh, is what it is.